had clothes si tuviera ropa, that had holes in them, y tuviera rotos, how would you describe them? ¿cómo lo describiría? Does anybody have clothes that, uh, any socks that have holes in them? Lola? No. Yeah, you do. I, no. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Why me? Why me? <laughs> uh, shirts, maybe, pants, clothes that have holes. We tried to describe them, and, and uh, some of us said, well, those would be worn out clothes. Uh, how would you describe clothes that had holes? Messy? Messy? Anybody else? Airy. Airy, air condition. You guys are on the same page there. I wonder why that is. And what about somebody said holy? And there's something I'd, I'd like to talk about this morning as far as God is concerned. And that is His holiness. And you say, well, the Bible describes God as a lot of things, right? Uh, the, the letter of John describes God. God is... What? Love. God is love. But if you think about God's love, where does it... Where does it originate from? ¿Dónde, cuál es su His holiness. Santidad. His love is holy. Su amor es santo. His justice su is holy. Es santo. His wrath su ira is holy. Es santo. His friendship, if you will, is holy. God is holy. And when you think about Moses and God's relationship, those two, one of the first things that God taught Moses was what? Yeah. What did God ask Moses to do when Moses interacted with God on the mountain? What did God tell Moses to do? Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. Take your sandals off. Why? And why was the ground holy? Because you were there. Yeah, that's right. Because God was there. That's right. And so one of the first things that God wanted to tell Moses about himself was, I am holy. Not his love. Not his justice. Not his wrath. His holiness. If you want to be holy, and if you want to be in the presence of God, you're going to have to take off your sandals. You're going to have to admit to yourself that I am not worthy to be in a holy God's presence. Only by His grace. Take off your sandals. If you step out of your sandals, you're going to be able to do something that God tells Moses is impossible. God told Moses, look, Moses asked God an interesting question. Let's back up for a minute. Moses asked God to see his glory. Now, what made him think to ask that? That is, that is really cool. I don't think I would be able to ask. I don't even think that would come into my mind. To ask God, let me see your glory. And what did God say to Moses? He can't touch this. No man can see me and live. And yet that's what we 
those who respond to God, those who allow Him to make us holy, those of us who take off our sandals, that is the very thing that God promises those, that we will see Him face to face. And so really the question is for all of us then, are we living in the sand? Are we trying to build our house upon the sand or the rock? So Exodus chapter 3. Verse 1. Just go ahead and read it, one through um, one through three. Éxodo tres, del uno al tres. Apacentando Moisés las ovejas de Jetro su suegro, sacerdote de Madián, llevó las ovejas a través del desierto y llegó hasta Jorge, monte de Dios. Y se le apareció el ángel de Jehová en una llama de fuego en medio de una zarza. Y él miró y vio que la zarza ardía en fuego. La zarza no se consumía. Entonces Moisés dijo, iré yo ahora y veré esta grande visión. ¿Por qué causa la zarza no se quema? Verse, verse five, sorry. Verse five. Seguimos cuatro. Viendo Jehová que iba a ver eh, lo llamó Dios en el medio de la salsa y dijo, Moisés, Moisés. Y él respondió, venme aquí. Y dijo, no te acerques, quita tu calzado de tus pies, porque el lugar en que tú estás, tierra santa es. No, and what did Moses do? ¿Qué hizo Moisés? No, no, God. Moisés, Moisés dijo que no. I'm not going to do that. No lo voy a hacer. No, he took him off. He took him off. Do you think God was trying to teach him something? It, knowing the history now, past this point in Moses' life, what God was going to bring him to accomplish, you think about where God was leading Moses trying to lead the people his people out of Egypt against one of the most powerful nations the most powerful nation at the time and one of the first things that he teaches Moses about himself is that he is holy now Moses is going to mess up especially after they come out of Egypt, even before then. You think about Moses in the sands of Egypt. He was trying to do some things his own way. And one of the things that he tried to do his own way was murder someone. And so he had gotten this call. God had called him. And what did he call him to do? Lead my people, Moses. And so Moses goes to Egypt. And he says, you know, God's called me. I see my people being harassed by the Egyptians. I think I need to let them know that God has called me. And so what does he do? What does he do to one of the Egyptians? He murders him. And so that, that, that really rallied Israel all together, didn't it? They were ready to follow him after that, right? No. Were you going to kill me too, Moses? Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we can do that too. 
we think we know where God is wanting to lead us to. And sometimes we step out of His will. And we step onto the sand. And build our life on it. But Moses, this wasn't going to be the last time that he was going to fall. But Moses was beginning to understand. God was teaching him about his holiness. Numbers chapter 20. Numbers 20. 1 through 13. Numbers 20. So Miriam is dead, Maria ha muerto. and the Isra Israel is complaining, Israel they've been freed from Egypt, ha sido de they don't have any pomegranates, no, ya no tienen, eh, what's, the, what's, the, what's the fruit that Lola, Lola made me this custard, what is it? Flan. Yeah, they didn't have any flan. They were all upset. <laughs> no onions and no water. So they began to complain. And we're going to read what Moses did with Aaron and why it was wrong in God's eyes. 1 through 13. Números 20, del 1 al 13. Llegaron los hijos de Israel, toda la congregación en el desierto de Sin, en el mes primero. Y acampó el pueblo en Cádiz, y allí murió María, y allí fue sepultada. Y porque no había agua para la congregación, se juntaron contra Moisés y Aarón. Y habló el pueblo contra Moisés diciendo, Ojalá hubiéramos muerto cuando perecieron nuestros hermanos delante de Jehová. ¿Por qué hiciste venir la congregación de Jehová a este desierto para que muramos aquí nosotros y nuestras bestias? ¿Por qué nos has hecho subir de Egipto para traernos a este mal lugar? No es lugar de cementera, ni higueras, ni viñas, ni de granadas, ni aún agua para beber. Y fueron Moisés y Aarón delante de la congregación a la puerta del tabernáculo de reunión. Se postraron sobre sus rostros, y la gloria de Jehová apareció sobre ellos, y habló Jehová a Moisés diciendo, Toma la vara y reúne la congregación, tú y Aarón, tu hermano, y hablar a la peña a vista de ellos. Y, ellos, y ella dará su agua, y les sacarás agua de la peña, y darás de beber a la congregación y a sus bestias. Okay, is that verse 8? That was verse 8. Okay. So what did God ask Moses to do with the rock? ¿Qué le pidió Dios a Moisés que hiciera con la roca? Strike it? Speak to it. Speak to it. Hablarle. And we're going to find out that Moses, Moisés, Moses, he had a, the right idea because what did he do when he heard the people complaining? He went before the Lord. He did. It says he went before the Lord with Aaron before the tent sought God's Blessing. Sought God. What, what do you want me to do, God? So he had it in his mind to do the right thing. And moments later, he's going to strike the rock twice when God told him to speak to it. And notice what God said was wrong with that. Verses 11 and 12. Eleven and twelve. Go ahead, nine. Nine through twelve. Entonces Moisés tomó la vara delante de Jehová como él le mandó. Reunieron Moisés y Aarón a la congregación delante de la peña y les dijo: 
oíd ahora rebeldes, os hemos de hacer salir agua de esta peña. Entonces alzó Moisés su mano y golpeó la peña con su vara dos veces. Y salieron muchas aguas y bebió la congregación y sus bestias. Y Jehová dijo a Moisés y Aarón, por cuanto no creísteis en mí para santificarme delante de los hijos de Israel, por tanto, no meteréis esta congregación en la tierra que les he dado. What did God say was wrong? Porque Dios dijo que estaba mal. Because you did not believe me? And? You did not consider me as holy. How did he, how did he do that? If God is asking you to do something, and God is holy, and he says, do it this way. And you say, nah. What did God do with Moses? What was his punishment for this? Wow. <laughs> so God because I struck the rock even though I know you told me to just speak to the rock they still drank water they still got it I just struck it when you told me to speak to it I can't go to the promised land How serious does God take his holiness? And not only that, but who, who was Moses, Sammy? Who was Moses? He was a leader. And he didn't do it behind a veil. He did it in front of the whole congregation. He says, you know what, Moses? You did not believe me, nor did you, did you treat me as holy. What did you say? What's that? Yeah, he was angry. Mm. And we'll see, even when he's arguing with God about going into the promised land, he's still blaming Israel. So what about when God says no? Do you think that God knows you better than you know you? You say, God, I want to be rich. And God says, you can't handle that. That would, that would strip you of your faith. No. You think he knows that? You think he knows if, uh, you know, this, this, this relationship isn't good for you. This is going to strip you of your faith. No. Do you think God wants you? What's God's ultimate plan for your life? When you... Yeah, You're boiling water in your pot. Anybody ever burn water before? You burn water before. You have someone here that's burnt water. You boil it down and boil it down, right? Or, or if, you, if you have a syrup, you tap a tree, syrup comes out, you boil it down to where it's just syrup left. You boil it all the way down. What God wants for you is for you to see him in eternity. That's the bottom line, boiled down version of God's plan for your life. Heaven. Heaven with Him. 
And so God's ultimate purpose in telling you no isn't to deprive you of something. It's to help you get somewhere. So when God told Moses no, no Moses, you can't enter the promised land. How did that help Moses appear on the Mount of Transfiguration? In glory. And so God said, no, Moses, you can't enter the physical promised land, but you can go and be with me. And so when God says no, remember that he knows you better than you know you, and he's trying to get you somewhere. And also remember that he doesn't always say no. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 3. I'll just read this. 23. And Moses is talking. Verse 23. I also pleaded with the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do such works and mighty acts as yours? See, trying to butter up God doesn't work. He can see right through that. Now, I'm not saying Moses was trying to butter him up, but those are pretty flattering words. Moses did believe them, too. Let me, verse 25... Let me, I pray, cross over and see the fair land that is beyond the Jordan, that good hill country in Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account. See, who is he still blaming? and would not listen to me. And the Lord said to me, Enough! Speak no more to me on this matter. What was God's final answer? No. <laughs> no. But you don't get it, God. Look what I've done for you. I mean, I couldn't even, I had a speech impediment. And I did what you asked me to do. I led your people out of Egypt. I led them through the Red Sea. I struck the rock when you told me to strike it. I, I spoke to the rock when you told me to speak to it. I'm, I'm Moses. I'm the man. I'm, I'm, the, I'm Moses. God says, no. No, Moses. I'm holy. And you treated me as unholy. In the sight of all my people. Mm -hmm. 
So how serious do you take the holiness of God? What did they want to do in the wilderness? What did the Israelites want to do? In Acts 7, we won't go there, but it said that Israel had turned back to Egypt in their heart. And so they were in the wilderness. They had escaped slavery. They were headed towards a good land that God had promised. But in their heart, they were back in Egypt. There's something there for us. Brothers and sisters, as Christians, we're in the wilderness. We've escaped slavery. We're headed towards a good land. A land that's been promised to us by God. And He's made the way for us to get there. Is your heart wanting to go back? to Egypt to the world think about it think about it yo amo Egipto I love Egypt is that what it says? <laughs> and if you are stepping out of your sandals treating God as holy respecting who he is revering his presence then you will be able to do something that God told Moses was impossible in 1st John 1st John 3 One through three. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. And such we are. For this reason, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God. It has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him. And how is that? Go ahead, say it. Because we will see him as he is. Porque lo tal como es. Because we will see him as he is. Le tal como él es. Now with that verse in mind, turn back with me to Exodus 33. Exodus 33. Moses and God, they're conversing again. And Moses gets it in his mind to ask an unbelievable question. It's wonderful. God, let me see your glory. That, I, I, that just amazes me. That he would think to ask a question like that. Not that he's being prideful. He's just, God, I want to know you. Let me see you. Unbelievable. Verse 12. And Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people, but you yourself have not let me know whom you will send me with me. 
Moreover, you have said, I have known you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now therefore I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know your ways, that I may know you, so that I might find favor in your sight. Consider too, that this nation is your people. And God said to him, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. And then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. For how then can it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not by your going with us, so that we, I and your people, may be distinguished from all the other people who are upon the face of the earth? Now there's something there for us too, brothers and sisters, that there may be a distinction, a difference between those who are gods and those who are of the earth. There should be a difference there. The Lord said to Moses in verse 17, I will also do this thing of which you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight, and I have known you by name. Then Moses said, I pray, show me your glory. <laughs> That's incredible to me. That's, and he said, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. But he said, what did he say? Why? can't see God and live. He's talking to Moses. Moses was the man. And he says, no, Moses, no man can see God, me, and live. He says, but I'll tell you what. I'll put you on the rock. Put you on the rock. Where did Moses start? He started in the sand. And now God says, I'm going to put you on the rock. And I'm going to cover you with my hand. And when I pass by, you can look at my backside. That's what he tells him. John wrote a letter. And he says, we shall be like him, speaking of Jesus, because we will see him just as he is. And God tells Moses here in this chapter that no one can see God and live. And that is the very promise that we as Christians have. But you have to be in the same foundation that Moses was on, which was the rock. God placed him in a rock. How much time do I have? Am I done? Okay. Matthew 5 and verse 8 says what? Mateo 5, 8. It's up there if you want to cheat. <laughs> Don't cheat, Micho. You should know the verse. <laughs> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. 
talking about the holiness of God, there is an expectation that those who follow a holy God will be what themselves? Holy. Okay. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now think about that. Jesus is preaching, and who is he speaking to? Who are his hearers? You think they know about the Exodus? Yeah, you think they know about Deuteronomy? Okay, you think they know about Moses being hidden in the cleft of the rock? You think they know about all of that? You think they know about when Moses was talking to God and, and God told Moses, look, no one can see me and live, Moses. You think they knew all about that? And then Jesus turns it on his head and says, blessed are those who are holy. Blessed are those who are pure in heart. For they shall see God. How would that make you feel? Would that motivate you to be pure in heart? If you know that the Old Testament said, God himself speaking, no one can see God and live. Jesus comes along and says, no, you can see God if you're pure in heart. Taking off our sandals is an act recognition that we understand that we do not belong in the presence of a holy God. It's like we had a bouncy house and I went into the bouncy house a week, a week ago a week ago I went into the bouncy house I'm almost 40 I do not belong in a bouncy house anymore stop laughing at me because you don't either. Okay? <laughs> I don't belong there anymore. I learned it the hard way. But, but brothers and sisters, sinners do not belong in the presence of a holy God. Only by His grace, only by the blood of Jesus, are we able to belong in the presence of a holy God. Moses started in the sands, started in the sands of Egypt. Was doing things how he thought they should be done. Stepping outside of what God really planned for him is murdering someone. Trying to do things his own way in the sands of Egypt. And Moses was able to see a glimpse of God's glory when God placed him on the rock. Brothers and sisters, are we the foolish man building, trying to build our house upon the sand? Or are we the wise man building our house on the rock? Amen. 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 Gracias. Gracias. I'm going to pray.